Good afternoon, everybody. How's it going? Thanks for joining us. I went ahead, since we're all working from home and potentially have kids, dogs, significant others, traffic outside, I went ahead and muted everybody so we don't have uh, any distractions on the microphone. And so um, what I went ahead and did was open up the group chat for everybody. Um, if you have any questions for me, um, I'll try and address those as you can write them in the group chat. Um, and if you um, otherwise can contact me on LinkedIn or whatever afterwards. So we'll give it one more minute here. Um, hey, Will, are you on? I have you muted, but type in on the group chat to let me know that you're on. Great. All right, we'll give it one more minute and then get started. True to nature of a lunch and learn, I do have my lunch, so I might take time and eat while we're doing this. All right, well, let's get started. Let me minimize everything here and uh, we'll get started. So thanks for joining. Um, we're all stuck inside and uh, socially distancing ourselves. So I just thought it would be a good time to put together a training, a little lunch and learn um, to go over different types of slug catchers, a few quick rules of thumb and uh, you know, if it can help you down the road in, in your projects or experience, then hopefully that works out well. Uh, my name is Adam Murray. I work with WeldFit. Uh, we specialize in automated pigging. Uh, my role oversees the extruded outlet headers and the harp type slug catchers. Um, that, uh, excuse me, I got people waiting to get in, so I'm, I'm uh, going to let them in here. Um, so my role oversees the harp type slug catchers and the extruded outlet headers uh, for WeldFit. Um, and with that, let's begin. Uh, oh, one more thing I wanted to note. Uh, my engineering manager, Will Stratton, is also uh, in the Lunch and Learn today. So if anyone has any questions, uh, again, please type them into the group chat and uh, Will's going to do his best to answer those uh, while, we're, while we're on here. Um, if we don't get them answered to you, we'll reach out to you afterwards. All right, so here's our outline. Uh, first off, it's a lunch and learn, so we're going to go through and uh, everyone can go ahead and start writing what you're having for lunch. Uh, true to uh, my style, I have my lunch right here. I don't know if you guys can see me or not, but uh, I ordered Chipotle. Uh, then we're going to go over what is a slug catcher, uh, what types of slug catchers are there. I'll show you a few famous slug catchers, um, how you select your slug catcher, design code, um, and then we'll get more specific into vessels, harps, hybrids, uh, talk about sizing of those slug catchers, and then uh, see if you have any questions. All right, so like I said, what's everybody got going for lunch? So I want to see some people type in there, but uh, I got some Chipotle. Looks like Claire has some tuna salad, so that's good. Everyone's getting fed today. It might be a little early for those, my contacts that are uh, in Denver, right? It's only 11 o'clock. All right, so what is a slug catcher? Uh, a slug catcher is a static piece of equipment uh, that's used in upstream, midstream, and downstream applications. Uh, they're designed to handle large volume of liquids moving through a pipeline. 
they're really, really meant to be a simple piece of equipment, a static piece of equipment. Um, you know, you don't want to overcomplicate things when, when you're trying to deal with slug catchers. Um, the goal is to keep them as simple as possible because the internal workings and the things you want to do with the slug catcher can get uh, actually quite difficult. And so we'll go over that soon. So the goal of a slug catcher um, is to create retention time, which helps uh, unexpected slugs uh, heading toward your plant, right? So it provides them with a stable, predictable inlet, uh, liquid stream or gas stream. So on the right hand side here, you can see uh, a few pigging scenarios. And what these show on the black dotted line there is um, when your pigs arrive and the liquid levels uh, that you'll see in a slug catcher. Um, and then uh, the slightly less dotted lines are going to be your pressure um, and your uh, flow uh, capacity across that slug catcher. So every time a pig does come in, it does interrupt pressure and flow a little bit, um, but that's to be expected if you fill a full pipeline with liquids as it hits your slug catcher. Um, but you can start to see the need for why you might need uh, a larger or a more robust type slug catcher uh, just from this profile here. So the type of slug catchers that we're going to be talking about, um, I mean, there's varieties, there's hundreds of different varieties out there, um, but the three main ones you're really going to see are a harp type slug catcher. Uh, that's going to be made out of standard pipe and fittings, a vessel type slug catcher, and then sort of a hybrid, which, which uses both technologies, right? They'll use a vessel and then they'll put some storage into the, into the um, pipe um, downstream of that. So uh, another legal legalese uh, comment here. So I pulled a lot of these uh, photos off uh, the web last night. So I don't have any uh, affiliation with um, some of the folks that made have made these. I'm not gonna mention any vendor names. Um, you do see one WeldFit data sheet later on. I work there, so uh, that's the data sheet that I have. Um, but really, I tried to keep this just as, as educational as possible so that everyone can, can learn about um, what they're trying to, trying to learn about slug catchers here. All right, so famous slug catchers. Um, on the left-hand side there, we have a Jord uh, slug catcher. Uh, that is a 28-finger harp. It's 620, approximately 620 feet long. And uh, I believe those are 28 fingers at 48 inches uh, thick of a slug catcher. So uh, that's, that's, I believe, the world's largest. It's about 44,000 barrels if I do the math uh, properly. Um, next, you got the Fujili uh, gas processing facility in Saudi Arabia. That's a pretty large vessel there. That's actually about a 7,000 uh, gallon uh, vessel type slug catcher. I think there are two of those that sit right next to each other. I tried to find the largest vessel slug catcher in the world and I couldn't, uh, but this one was pretty impressive. Um, I think it had 177 axles on that uh, trailer that's trying to pull it to the ship, ship channel there. And slug catchers shouldn't be confused as you Google slug catchers with uh, baseball slug catchers, right? So Gary Sanchez, catcher of the New York Yankees, he hits a lot of home runs, but uh, he is not uh, the slug catchers that we're talking about today. All right, so we just talked about uh, a few different types of slug catchers. Um, what do you want to look at when you're really trying to select uh, the slug catcher, you know, that you need? Um, but the first and obvious uh, thing to look at is your land or surface requirements, right? So West Texas, uh, pretty flat, pretty pretty vast land area. Um, they really don't have a lot of constraints out there. So harp style slug catchers seem to be uh, really attractive out there. Um, if there are space constraints, uh, horizontal vessels, you know, are typically the next thing considered. Um, they're sort of the go-to in the oil and gas industry up until, uh, you know, four or five years ago when a lot of these big plants starting to get built. Uh, and then in severe, you know, limited land spaces, offshore type scenarios, um, you're looking at vertical vessels or you're trying to just engineer so that you don't really have to 
have that much storage of liquids. Um, so then when you're, the next thing you'll look at is uh, operating pressure of your slug catcher, right? So um, if inlet pressures are greater than 500 PSIG, you're really starting to look at a pipe type slug catcher. Um, that's specifically because the codes that you're using to build these slug catchers, um, you know, allow you to use less material. We'll get into the codes in a little bit, but they allow you to use less material. Sometimes when the pressure gets so high, um, when you're trying to use a vessel and the volumes get bigger, um, the larger diameter of the vessel, the thicker uh, that material is going to have to be. So, um, like on the one vessel that I showed you earlier, that was uh, five and a half inch thick uh, roll and welded steel. So, uh, very heavy, very expensive in material. So, uh, operating pressure does have a play in that. Next, you're going to look at your uh, production equipment, right? And what sort of uh, inlet specifications that they require. So uh, fortunately, production equipment has gotten, uh, you know, what I would say to be better at handling uh, a little bit more liquids. We're talking micron level here, which is not, it's not gonna take a slug, but they've gotten a little bit better at handling, uh, you know, higher micron inlet gas. Um, and so separating down to the bare, bare minimum uh, just hasn't been a huge requirement recently. Uh, but horizontal vessels are commonly thought to provide the best separation. Uh, you can see things quoted down to 10 micron or lower uh, if they're using internals such as vein packs, uh, mist eliminators, and things like that. Uh, harp type slug catchers uh, can be engineered to be as efficient as that. They get extremely huge if you're trying to get down to that level. Um, harp type slug catchers are typically engineered between the 150 micron and 300 micron range. Um, some sit around the 500 micron range. In this instance, I always recommend, um, you know, since everyone, uh, all the harp slug catcher manufacturers, if you will, have their sort of own black box um, of how they do it and have their own calculations of how they do it, um, it's always recommended if you can uh, to use CFD and try and prove out the process and the separation capability. The final thing to look at um, is liquid storage. So uh, that's going to be a pretty uh, obvious choice there. You know, horizontal vessels, you know, we're talking, you know, 500 to 700 barrels, probably maximum that you'd want to do there. Um, vertical vessels, probably less than that. And then harps can go into the tens of thousands of barrels range of storage. I can't see my notes here. So Will, I hope you're answering some questions. Let me uh, try and pull that up uh, to see if I can see the chat. Perfect. Okay, let's go back. All right. So as far as comparison on vessel slug catchers and harp type slug catchers, really you're only gonna be looking at a couple things. Uh, harp type slug catchers um, are made uh, with ASME B31.8. Uh, they can only be constructed with pipe and fitting. So uh, they're pretty strict on the way that they list that out. And then uh, the B31.8 section uh, or year 2018 release uh, is very specific in saying that there's no internal welding on there. So uh, if you're going to be to the pipeline code, uh, you're not going to be welding on the inside as you, you know, typically wouldn't on a pipeline. So um, no internal welding on those slug catchers and trying to keep it out of uh, standard pipe and fittings uh, or the extruded outlets, uh, which, which, you know, companies like WeldFit and others can provide uh, to make it a little bit more robust construction. A vessel slug catcher, you're going to be looking at the ASME um, code section 8. Uh, class Div 1 or Div 2. There are various different fabricators out there that have Div 1 or Div 2 capabilities. Um, really what this is going to do is going to engineer, uh, you know, around the thickness of the vessel. So uh, Div 2 allows you to save a little bit uh, of cost on materials um, and some other, you know, some other things there. Uh, with vessels, process internals are allowed. So uh, you can have baffles, you can have weir plates, um, you can have mist eliminators, vein packs, and a variety of different um, 
technologies that help that vessel act uh, a little bit better. All right, so let's let's dig into vessel type slug catchers. So here we have a vessel type slug catcher horizontal. Uh, you have your inlet on the left, uh, your liquid out on the bottom right, and your gas uh, out on the top right. Uh, you show your liquids, your gases inside. Uh, as I just mentioned, you have a baffle uh, shown here, a demister, uh, level control, all common things that you would find on, on almost any slug catcher. Um, you know, but as I mentioned on harps, you're not going to have any of the internals. So uh, these all de vary depending upon requirements and uh, everyone has their own preference of kind of how they set these up. Some advantages of some vessel slug catchers. I really like this picture on the right here because it shows how turbulent the uh, liquid can get um, when you're looking at the inside of one of these. Uh, this one does have a weir, so um, looks to be uh, separating at three phase. Uh, I, again, I pulled this off the internet just to, to kind of give you guys an example, but uh, that's the way it looks to be. So uh, some advantages of vessel type slug catchers, they do separate uh, down to extremely low microns, right? So we're talking 10 microns or less. Um, that's important when you have a really highly engineered piece of production equipment that you're trying to uh, send your uh, volume to. Uh, they can be used as a three-phase separator as shown here. Uh, really that's just going to depend on your situation and, and where you're kind of trying to, to take your gas or liquids. Uh, typical good separation for horizontal vessels is five to 700 barrels. Uh, when you start getting up in the larger barrels, this is going to be sort of market driven, economically driven. Uh, when vessels are really popular, you know, people tend to flip to harps a little bit quicker uh, just because they can, you know, it can be a better economic decision. But typically we see this between 700 and 1,000 barrels on a pretty consistent basis. Um, Another thing you can do with vessels is use them in parallel. So um, a lot of these gas processing plants or compressor stations, they have various different gathering systems that are coming into uh, the facility. So uh, one gathering system might be on one pressure and another gathering system might be on another. Uh, it is possible to have uh, multiple vessels um, in parallel with varying inlet pressures, you go into a compressor station and then you can kind of combine it into one large uh, pipeline there. So uh, lots of flexibility, or at least a little bit of flexibility there um, on the vessel slug catchers. If I'm going too fast or slowing down, let me know. Um, trying to get everyone in and out in about a half an hour or so. Um, you know, again, please ask questions or, or do whatever as we have a little bit of time here. All right, so moving into harp type slug catchers. Before I dig in, anyone have any questions on vessels? Um, I will raise my hand and say I am not the 100% the vessel expert. I have an app on my phone that helps me size some vessels um, just to double check some things. And uh, I definitely rely on the experts when I do have vessel questions. So um, if anyone has questions, happy to track down the answers for you. But uh, uh, we'll get into harps here in a second. All right, so harp type slug catchers. I think this is a pretty good uh, looking CFD here on the right. Just kind of shows the, the liquid coming in, the inlet, uh, dropping down the down comer and moving into the storage fingers. Um, I guess I can go back here um, and explain that a little bit. Um, so on the left-hand side of this photo here, uh, what you see is some inlet piping. Uh, that's where it's going to come in from the gathering system or in from the pipeline system. Uh, with, the, with the way that this slug catcher is laid out, you're going to have to split that flow multiple times. So it goes through two splits so that you're actually creating four inlets into this slug catcher. And really why you're doing that is for symmetrical flow. Um, you want to make sure that the gas is flowing through the separation tubes uh, properly and you wanna make sure that the liquid goes into the downcomers and into the storage uh, tubes evenly so that you can ensure uh, steady flow and ensure that one finger isn't going, getting overwhelmed with liquids versus another 
and the gas flow isn't going through one separation finger uh, over another. Uh, this can drastically uh, reduce the efficiency that you have on these harps. So balance here is really the key. Um, and again, why we, we kind of uh, look toward the experts in engineering this out, but also look towards CFD so that you can sort of uh, predict the internals of what this slug catcher is going to do. Uh, so the top fingers here on the left-hand side, uh, you, you, you split into your inlet header there. On the top, you have the short little separation fingers. So those are sort of acting as horizontal vessels, right? That's where um, your slug uh, sort of uh, rolls into there. Um, it levels off and then it drains back down into your downcomer, which is the, the small piece connecting uh, down into the storage tubes. Uh, typically, uh, the, the separation tubes are angled up and the storage tubes are angled down so that your liquids flow, uh, in this case, to the far end of the photo uh, where your liquid manifold is. Your dry gas would come out the top uh, in that small manifold at the top there. So uh, hopefully everyone has an idea of sort of the pieces of, of that slug catcher. All right, so now to the CFD, right? So here's where we can see the liquid coming in. Uh, it sort of gathers in that first header uh, and then drains down into the downcomers uh, into the storage tubes. So that's what that photo is depicting there. Uh, some advantages of the harp type slug catchers. Uh, they are capable of catching very large slugs. Um, you know, the one I showed from Jord earlier is 44,000 barrels. Um, I've seen a couple 20,000 barrels slug catchers here domestically. Um, typically those ones are catching offshore, uh, offshore production. Uh, they are very predictable at particle separation. Um, I've seen 50 microns uh, on a slug catcher before, um, but typically these are being sized for around 150 micron uh, using standard pipe and fittings um, and 300 you know, 150 and 300 is typically what we're seeing in the industry today. Uh, they can be shipped in pieces for easy installation. So uh, these things are constructed. It's basically three or four main headers, uh, depending on the design. There are multiple different designs of these. Um, but typically, it's three or four headers uh, that ship them on a flatbed truck out to site. Um, and then the pipe uh, usually just ships straight from um, the yard or the mill or wherever it's coming from to site, uh, they can weld those in and uh, get this thing put together. So, and then definitely, uh, you know, these things wouldn't exist if they weren't economic at some point. So uh, at higher pressures and typical larger volumes, they become more and more economic versus multiple vessels and even other hybrid type installations. Some things to know about uh, harp type slug catchers. So a, a lot of times I get asked, you know, uh, how do you choose the, the number of fingers um, on a harp type slug catcher? So uh, really that's the impressive part to me is the wider um, that the harp is or the more fingers that the harp is has uh, is the more gas volume that it's gonna uh, flow through it. So, um, you know, that, that to me is kind of the neat part. Uh, liquid storage is the storage fingers uh, length. Uh, that's how long the slug catcher is. So if there's gonna be more liquid volume, it's just gonna be a much longer slug catcher. Uh, it's, it's more cost effective to make it longer uh, than wider. I wanted to highlight this picture as well. So this is sort of a stacked um, design. Uh, I've seen a couple of these out in the field. Um, it seems pretty interesting to me. Um, I haven't run the, the CFD calculations or any of the sizing calculations on this, but uh, it looks like someone's attempt to save some footprint and get some different separation there. And I just thought it to be a really neat, uh, really neat design. All right, so we've gone over vessels and we've gone over harps. Um, then you can start kind of look at the hybrid slug catchers. I don't have many slides on the hybrid slug catchers. Uh, really, it's just gonna be exactly what I talked about on a vessel, except for you're gonna have some sort of uh, inlet piping that goes into uh, a storage fingers. So as you can see here, this is, this is uh, you know, what 
an example of a setup would look like. All right, so sizing the slug catcher. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, they're meant to be pretty simple. Um, they're just, they call vessels Coke cans. They're just sort of big empty vessels uh, that try and get the liquid out of the way. And harps, they're meant to be simple. They're meant to be made with standard pipeline uh, pieces of equipment, uh, pipe and fittings. But really, when you get to the inside, you have a lot of things going on. You got, you got multi-phase flow coming into a piece of equipment. You got to get the liquids out of the way. You got to give it time to separate. You got to slow the gas down enough to where that those liquid droplets will let gravity take hold and will drop out. So um, a few things that you got to take a look at first, you got to look at your liquid levels, how you size the slug catcher, right? High liquid level, low liquid level, normal liquid level, and what the flow is that you're going to see. So a few little calculations there. Um, and no need to screenshot these. There's not going to be any secret sauce or anything in here. Um, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but really, it's just a matter of uh, going through your sizing calculations, right? So next, you're going to look at your flow rate of your liquid and your gas. You're going to look at the molecular weight of your liquid and your gas. You're going to look at the de density. You're going to look at the viscosity. You're going to look at the surface tension of your liquid and then the average particle size. Uh, that you're trying to do. So what you want to do in the slug catcher is really slow that velocity down so that the liquids are dropping out, but also so that it's not going so fast that it re-entrains liquid. You got turbulent uh, liquids uh, sloshing around in either the separation fingers or the vessel, and what you don't want to do is kind of pick up mist uh, as your gas flows through. Uh, we've all been to the beach and seen a wave crash over and you see kind of mist shoot over uh, the wave with the wind behind it. That's sort of the way I envision it. You don't want that happening. You want the gas uh, to slow down as much as possible. So next up, uh, this is where they sort of get complicated, right? I'm sorry this is small. I tried to fit a lot on here. And again, this isn't ours. It's an example I pulled off a, a white paper, but uh, you go into your inlet header sizing, you go into your splitter sizing, as we talked about, you got to split the flow on harps. Um, and then you got to go into your separation tube sizing, your downcomer sizing. So all in all, you're looking at Stokes law, intermediate law, Newton's law. Um, you're trying to get, you know, your liquid separation lengths. You're trying to get your downcomer sizes. You're trying to do reentrainment calculations. Uh, just a lot going on. So. Um, really here what we try and say is, <clears throat> you know, there's definitely a place to learn. And if anyone has specific questions about sizing slug catchers, I'm happy to go through that um, on a more individual basis. Um, WealthFit does sort of have our own, you know, proprietary sizing sheets. As I mentioned, our, our competitors and other fabricators do as well. Um, but really, there's a lot going on. So in the end, um, what happens is you got to look at your pressure, you got to look at um, your velocity of your gas, you got to look at the size of micron droplets that you want, um, and then you got to run through all those scenarios to try and get um, what you need to go through your slug catcher. So it's a lot. There's a lot going on. Uh, equations flowing through your head, sizing calculators, CFD analysis uh, for all these slug catchers. And so um, really call an expert, and if you're hiring an engineering company or you're working with an engineering company, uh, this is something to get trained up on because uh, it's pretty neat. It's pretty fun to do. So you have a slug catcher application, right? Um, what are the next steps? Uh, on the right here, we have a data sheet. This is what I would send to a typical customer that was looking at a slug catcher um, for, for WeldFit. Um, but the main things I'm going to ask for right up front are if there's a gas analysis available, uh, the volume of gas liquids per day, um, whether that's a slug size or just general liquid flow, how much storage they're looking for. Uh, and those can be two different things, right? So they might get 2,000 barrels of liquid per day. The slug size might be 1,000 barrels, but they might want to design their slug catcher for 3,000 barrels. Uh, this gets pretty popular in the colder climates and in 
you know, places that are hard to get to, you'll, you'll upsize the storage at that point, just because if something goes down or you need to shut down a plant or a compressor station, you know, you can still kind of flow <clears throat> and, uh, and hold that liquid storage for, for a day or two. Uh, you know, we're asking about design factors. So really this is going to come into uh, where the slug catcher is going to be located. 99% of the slug catchers domestically here are going to be 0.5. Um, and then depending on whether it's a vessel or a harp, we're going to look at ASME B31.8 or Section 8 Div 1, Div 2 uh, for vessels. And then finally, footprint limitations. So that's going to be a big determiner if we put a big harp type slug catcher out there or a couple horizontal vessels. And that's it for today. Guys, I uh, want to thank you for letting me do this first little lunch and learn here. Uh, we're all kind of stuck in our houses and I wanted to get people at least trained up a little bit. So that was Slug Catcher 101. I'm happy to do uh, uh, a little bit more in detail down the road, a, a, a more Slug Catcher graduate student edition if we need to. Um, but I'm always looking for ideas on what you'd like to hear about and what you'd really like to um, see with regards to these lunch and learns. Um, with everyone being stuck inside for the next couple weeks, at least, I think, um, I'm, I'm thinking I might get a couple of my uh, connections to do a few more of these. So uh, look for another one, maybe next Wednesday or Friday. And uh, if I can help out with anything else, please uh, let me know. I have included my contact information on the last page here. Um, you can always visit weldfit.com. We got, you know, our slug catcher information is up there. Um, and then uh, really, I think I'm gonna find a good place to post this. I've recorded this video. So I'm gonna try and put this uh, video online for everyone to see. And uh, as we do more of these, hopefully we can just develop a library and everyone can sort of check it out. So thanks again, everybody. And uh, look forward to chatting with you next time. Have a good day.